Welcome to the Blue Dragon Guild, a channel all about Dungeons and Dragons. I'm Baron. And I'm Chris. In today's video, we are discussing the monster of the month. And this month's monster is... The Flail Snail. Found in Volo's guide page 144. Uh, this, uh, this monster is really interesting. It comes in at a CR3... When you think of something called a flail snail, I really don't think people think that it's an elemental, which it is. Because the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, it's a you know monstrosity, some magic beast. But nope, elemental. So one thing I find right off the bat interesting about flail snail, other than I love the name, because yeah. it's hilarious, is that, it's a, like you said, it's a CR3... It has a crazy good AC. Oh, yeah. It's a, sitting on a 16 natural that could go higher based on what you do with it. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy at level 3. Yeah. But their dex is not the best. Right. But, I mean, you know, I with that AC, they've got a, they've got a pretty decent health pool, uh, 52 hit points. Unless you roll them, but I mean that's that's still pretty good. Um, they are a large creature. Um, they're immune to fire, poison, and the poisoned condition. Um, they don't speak any languages. For those of you wanting to know, <laughs> um, they have some really cool abilities that uh, make them fairly formidable in in a combat encounter. I also like, um, as a side note, their senses. They get dark vision. That's neat. A lot of monsters get dark vision yeah. in D&D. However, they also get tremor sense. So that's super cool. And a lot of stuff outside of like underground monsters, like bullets and stuff, mm -hmm. don't get tremor sense. Yeah. So that's really scary. If you thought that their crazy AC was bad enough, they can also just always know where you're at. Yep, it goes back to that whole they're an elemental, um, they're an elemental of earth. So you know, tremor sense kind of goes hand in hand with earth elementals. Um, but yeah, I agree that really gives you that uh, kind of they're hunting for kind of things. You know, maybe they're right. burrowed underground or something. There's there's some fun you can have with uh, tremor sense, especially since it's uh, not that common. I want to get right into it and talk about their shell. Of course. Let's go. So, at like just on its face, they have a really cool-looking giant shell that you can harvest and make we or, uh, not weapons, but you can make armor out of it. You could make weapons, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's magic. More specifically, anti-magic. And... It gives the snail disadvantage against spells, so that's real bad for the caster in your party. So your spell attack will get disadvantage against it. That's bad. It has other things that it gets, like you roll a d6, I believe, and then you get different abilities. Or the snail will get different abilities based on that. So some of them are a little more benign, like targets a snail, it could miss, there's no effect... Um, some of it, however, makes it the snail convert that energy into destructive power. Yeah, that's nice. super cool, and it kind of blows up in this magic bomb almost. That's really good. Yeah, um, definitely don't throw this against a party that's uh, too low level. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is a CR three, but I, you know, level two characters they're gonna struggle with this. Level ones, so they're yeah. <laughs> They're a die. Yeah. That alone, even if you took that out, everything else it gets yeah. will kill level one. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and of course, you know, like their name, they have the ability Flail Tentacles. Uh, they got five tentacles, and whenever the snail takes ten damage or more on a single turn, one of its tentacles die. Um... Even if one of one tentacle remains, the uh, snail regrows all dead ones within 1d4 days. If all tentacles die, the snail retracts into its shell, gaining total cover. 
and it begins wailing, a sound that can be heard for 600 feet, stopping only when it dies, 5d6 minutes later. Um, healing magic restores limbs, such as the regenerate spell. Um, yeah, um, that it can revert this dying process. So that's kind of a fun little, uh, fun little snippet that you can throw it in, you know, as a DM. It's like, well, you guys, you, you know, you, you cut off all its flails. It just curls up into a ball and this unearthly screeching just starts to happen. It'll, it'll be one of those, like we talk about, um, a lot and on the channel is one of those memorable moments that your party can have <laughs> right and the other thing with that is if the healing magic uh like regen halts the dying process you have to choose all right so this thing's screaming mm -hmm. do i heal the bad guy to fight it again potentially or let it die but who knows what's going to happen in 5d6 minutes in D&D &D time. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. One one thing, you know, like like Chris said, their shell is worth some coin since you can convert it into uh, armor and shields and potentially weapons if your DM is willing. So you could use that in itself as a small plot point for your party. In addition to that, because I had kind of along the same lines, I mean, that's pretty... I thought we would cross over a little bit with that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's a good plot hook. Hey, go get this magic shield. Which it is. But also, their slime trail turns into glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I thought that would be cool at low level to... Hey, I need you to go get this rare glass. Because they said it varies in, like, purity. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of neat. But your party won't know what it's for. Be like, hey, it's weird, it's this, like, slime stuff. You'll know what it is, and then, yeah. boom, flail snail. Yeah. So, a way I thought about using these as sort of a combat... I mean, it's a combat encounter. They're gonna fight you. But I thought about using them as a guard Ooh. in, like, a cave or something because they make that wailing. So if you can somehow domesticate them throw them out there as a guard if they kill the enemy great if they don't they're going to make that wailing they're going to alert everything in the cave or castle or whatever you're using them for in addition to that um they're going to wreck the casters as we talked about oh yeah oh yeah but if you but if you have a strong melee party they get up to a 20 ac when they're inside the shell yep. that's crazy and the multi attack Per tentacle, they get a maximum five attacks for every remaining tentacle, like total, not per yeah, tentacle, yeah, but yeah. so up to f but up to five attacks per turn, and they're doing d6 plus three per thing. Yeah, like that's gonna drop. I don't care if it's a barbarian or it's a paladin, whatever. Mm -hmm. If it hits, it is bad. Yeah, um, those those level three characters just stumbling across this or finding it in the right. dungeon, like, you, watch out. Don't let, don't and let it, like you say, near it. <laughs> no. You're gonna and it's that. large. Yeah, it's large, too. Like, like, so, that's a problem. You know, like I said, it gets up to a 20 AC, That's it takes its turn, but it's a 20 AC. Yeah. yeah. But it can come back out as a bonus action, so yeah. it could be like, oh, it's beating me up, hole up, well, crap, we can't hit it. Pop back out as a bonus action. Next turn, five attacks on everybody. Yep. Oh man, they're they're that vicious. Is they're vicious. A for lot sure. worse than I thought. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I know we fought one before, but yeah, I think we did pretty good on it. This it could have went real bad, real quick. Yeah, I I remember. I'm fairly certain it was Dave who threw it at us. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was when Volo's guide first, very first, first came out, out. <laughs> and like, like, like I said, you know, I thought, you know, oh, it's just some big weird snail, but it's got so, so many mean things. I mean, um, Tommy's usually our melee guy. I know for a fact that Tommy got beat up by this thing. <laughs> right, right, and I know I did too. Like, because 
we ran into that. Yep. And it's just, you can't, you can't cast against it. Cool. It's got advantage. It's going to blow up in a bomb, potentially, yeah. if they roll yeah. good. It's, if we get too close to kill it, it's going to beat us to death. Like, you have to just leave it alone, maybe? Yeah. But if it's hostile, because it says they eat, like, dirt and rock mm -hmm. and crystals, especially. And if your hook is, hey, I gotta go get these crystals. Yeah. Crap. I gotta stop a flail snail from eating the stuff for the plot hook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is super mean. Yeah, it is. Or, thinking about something else, since they're so prized, you could throw something at your party, like, it's not necessarily the flail snail you're fighting, it's people that are hunting the flail snail for its shell. Yep. So, like, you know, the town gets together, and everybody's just like, it's mine, and what do you do? Are you going to kill innocent people just because they're hunting it, or are you going to let them have it? Like, you know, there's a lot of fun RP elements, I think, you could put with this. And decisions to make Agreed. outside of standard fight a monster, get treasure, repeat. Agreed. I think that's a really good segue into um, the next portion. What are some different ways you would use one of these in um, an encounter? Um, other than sort of what I talked about with making them an alarm, that's, that's neat mm -hmm. and that's kind of easy. I would use them similarly like I did the Darkling, um, like a trap. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're in a room, things can go down, and a door drops, and what is it? Flail snail. Yep. Or it could be, you know, the fact that it's anti-magic. The whole time, everybody's like, oh, you know, there's been no spell traps, there's been no magic traps, there's been, this is easy, this dungeon's nothing, and then you get into a room like this that restricts their spells, and the room itself could restrict their spells... <laughs> So, it could really be bad if your party is mostly casters, because you could do a little bit of tweaking with them and shut it down right now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Which I think is fun, because sometimes casters get out of control. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, the idea I had, um, kind of like with what I did with the Darklings in last month's video... Uh, which you can find in the link right up here. With that, I, I like to spin things um, to where they don't necessarily have to be a combat encounter. I had this idea, there's this crazy druid, he's got a farm of flail snails. He's breeding them, he's, getting them, he's pulling them from the elemental plane. One of them gets away. And... The party, the druid has something that the party needs. So he's like, all right, guys, let's just do a service swap. You go retrieve my snail, I'll give you this thing that you need. So, you know, they've got that nice trail of glass slime that they follow. Um, my, my idea was, you know, there's a nearby abandoned quarry that the flail snail's just in there eating on some uh, minerals, some crystals. So, there's a couple ways that you can spin it. You can do, like Chris mentioned earlier, there's a couple people there trying to kill the snail and get his shell. And so, you know, you gotta fight him off. And well, you know, you help that flail snail out, so he's gonna follow you back and, you know, be nice. The other idea I had was you kinda had to do a breadcrumb trail to kinda get him to follow you back. Oh. So, you know, the barbarian runs up. All right, run up, punch that flail snail, and we'll just we'll just run and try to get it back to back to this druid. What what if? All right, hear me out. All right, go go with that. And the way we have to one of the options to lure it back is it likes to eat minerals. And you get a lot of those things, like gems, Yeah, is treasure, so are you going to give up your rubies and yeah. stuff like that, and that it's going to eat, because you're not getting them back, yeah. that you're throwing money at it, essentially, 
to guide it back <laughs> to the druid who hopes he gives you something that's Hopefully. worth i mean if you know what you're getting it's fine but if it's just like a quest item great you're out who knows however much <laughs> treasure money any anything that isn't just like refined yep. pieces of gold you know what i mean yep. oh man that's tommy's nightmare I guess it really just depends on what that reward is. Wow. Wow. Uh, that seems like, uh, I'm going to abandon this. Yeah. But that's that's a cool thing. And I guess you could buy that token. You could also use it, like you said, with the quarry in a million other ways. Oh, it's eating my minerals in the mine. Yeah. It's, I'm a rich guy, and it's now, like, eating his stuff yeah. Like, yeah. Because I mean, they're they're unaligned. I guess we didn't talk about that. Like, they have no alignment, so they're just like like you said, basically a beast. Mm -hmm. That's an elemental. It'd be like if a cow was eating your gold, only <laughs> yeah. it would murder yeah. you. You know, like it's yeah. not trying to be malicious. It's just doing its thing. To but if you get too close, it will kill you. Yep. <laughs> oh man, fun stuff. <laughs> I need to read this book more. <laughs> like, it's, well, it has such good low-level monsters, and I'm so used to doing, like I'm sure other DMs are doing, just using the same stuff again, like we talked about, trying to use different monsters in different ways. Yeah. That this is sort of my secondary option, mm -hmm. and I feel it. 50% of it could be used early game. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, that's, that's something to think about. I, yeah... Yeah, this book does have some good low-level monsters. I feel kind of like uh, Morton Kynan's Tome of Foes has some has more higher-level monsters. Right. This is like this feels. And if you don't have this book, anybody watching this, you should get this book. If you're a DM, definitely Volo's Guide is incredible. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty cheap now. And if, like you said, this is sort of feels like. A, what the second monster manual would be in old editions. Yeah, yeah. And I really appreciate that because who you know monsters are great. You always want mm -hmm. more monsters, and it just feels different. Yeah. And this I flail agree. snail, especially, like they all feel different. Yeah. Like that's a cool inclusion. It could have been anything, and they're like, nope. Let's put this thing in there. See what happens. Yep. If you want to get your own copy of Volo's Guide to Monsters. Head down to the description and follow the link. So this has been April's Monster of the Month, the Flail Snail. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and leave a comment down below um, telling us what you enjoy about the Flail Snail. If you've ever used one, if you've ever died to one, tell us about it. If you want to see more D&D content from us, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get our notifications. We upload a new video every Friday. And until next time, keep the dice rolling.